These four chords are by far the most commonly used chords today and have been for decades. And they don't have to be in that order, but any combination of those chords basically sounds great and it's used all over the place. Adele's Hello. The Scripps Hall of Fame. Um, Journeys Don't Stop Believing. Um, and Sia's Chandelier is another one. Um, it's a little bit more interesting. So, yeah, Chandelier is actually pretty interesting because the pre-chorus and the chorus, what I just played, can be argued to be in C Lydian. And that's because, first, it has the right notes. There's C Lydian and it has those notes. Um, but beyond that, the two progressions that I just played, the pre-chorus and chorus, both start with a C major chord. So they start on a C chord, and if you wanted to say that they're both in E minor, they just, it's, the progression doesn't start on the root, but they're, it, it's an E minor. Well, there's no E minor chord in the chorus. And if you said it was in G major, there's no G major chord in the pre-chorus. So, ah, it might be in C Lydian. Personally, as much as C Lydian would be interesting for a song with 1.5 billion views on YouTube, realistically, I think it's just in E minor and then moves to G major for the chorus. Really, the most important thing about what key it's in is how it feels, but this is all semantics, so uh, let's get to why these chords work. In short, these chords allow you to make melodies extremely easily. You can basically just play or sing notes from the scale of the key that you're in, just as long as it's in the key of the song, and you'll be fine the whole way through. You don't really have to worry about which chord is going on. Um, and this is because, at least if, if you're in the minor key, the chords are all very closely related to one another. Two of the major chords share two of the... only one note is different from the root chord, right? Right? Only one note different from those two. And the odd one out is D major in this key. It's that middle major chord. The reason why that's different is because, it, well, it doesn't share any notes with the root chord E minor, um, but it's a step away from both E minor and C major, and it is the fifth of G, right? It's the fifth of G, which makes it very easy to use as a passing chord from any of those other chords to any of those other chords. Um, it, it does require that you change the melody notes a little bit to work with it most of the time. Uh, so oftentimes it'll get pushed rhythmically so that it works more as a passing chord. Uh, so kind of like... Kind of like that. Um, so yeah, it works really well to pass between chords. Um, and even if you're using it as like a full chord, um, you just alter the, the melody notes a little bit. So you're doing, instead of like, you do like, you know, it's not that hard. Um, so, you know, but it gives it a little bit more interest because it's got a passing chord. Um, I think that this progression... I think that's pretty boring. That sounds pretty boring to me. It's made a lot more interesting with the D major, uh, that first way I played it. Uh, but yeah, these four chords, they're easy, they're just triads, and they allow for all sorts of melodies, uh, but they have a little passing chord in there to keep them from being bland, so it's a pretty great recipe. Um, if you have a really complicated chord progression with all sorts of extensions and slash chords and whatnot, the melodies that can be created for that and sound good are quite limited. However, the downside to having immense freedom in melodies is that new melodies aren't as interesting because they're easy to make. Uh, so they all kind of blend because there's so many of them. And in that way, it kind of nullifies itself. 
But in my opinion, the reason why they're still successful, why this progression is still successful, is because of sound design. In the last several decades, popular music has shifted from being made from exclusively real instruments to incorporating a lot, or sometimes only, electronic instruments. In the 50s and 60s, swing was still the most popular music, but by the 70s, big name synthesizers like the DX7 were coming out, and people started using them. In the 70s, and even more so in the 80s, there were quite a few popular songs that used synthesizers, and by the 2000s, synths were all over the place. In the last several years, synths are in almost every single popular song. And synths, or electronic instruments, are instruments that you make a new sound for every time. If you're learning the clarinet, for example, there's a certain sound that you're trying to achieve. That sound is a set sound that is already established, and you're just trying to produce it. But with a synth, you're creating a new instrument every time you use it. So, having four chords that you can always go to and easily create a good melody with is effective when a big part of the art is the sound design. Uh, one more thing, covering a song with super easy melodies and chords is just that, super easy. And if you have more people covering your song, your song gets more spotlight, more publicity, um, and, of course, people don't want to listen to music that sounds like a technical feat. They want to listen to music that they can easily process and enjoy. So sparse instrumentation and simple harmonies are fine, as long as they sound good. And, of course, as we've seen, this sounds good. The separation between professional and amateur is the production and the sound design, in today's popular music at least. So there you go, the most commonly used four chords of all time. I post videos like these every Thursday, so hope to see you next week. Thanks for watching.